are watching BBC Health Alert on BBC Inner Side. My name is Pamela DeLeon Lewis, and I am very excited to be here. I'm thankful to BBC for inviting me on to spread the word about breast cancer. Yes, I'm a five-year breast cancer survivor. And I have lots and lots of information to give you, but before we do, I want you to call your friends, call your family, and gather them by the TV. Okay, because we have lots of information for you, but you got to stay tuned because we'll be right back after this message. Hi, thank you for staying tuned. I have lots of information for you. And the first thing I want to let you know is that there is an organization that's geared to the Caribbean community that's called the Caribbean American Breast Cancer Organization, which I founded. It's a nonprofit organization. And we have lots of resources and referrals for free help if you need exams, regardless of immigration status. You can get yourself a free mammogram because this is something that I want to spread throughout the Caribbean community. I want everyone to know that you need to do your monthly breast self-exams. It is most important that you do. Even the teenagers should start doing this because unfortunately, teens are getting breast cancer just as well as older women. It is no longer safe to say that uh, cancer is something, breast cancer is something that is uh, geared towards the 50 year old and older. Uh, we have lots of teenagers now who have breast cancer. So, so I want you to encourage your kids to start doing their self-exams every month, about two weeks after they see their period. Let them get into the habit and keep a calendar of when they do it. And report any changes that they might see in their breasts. Women 20 to 30 years old, if you have an older sister or mother, if cancer is in the family, you need to do your exams uh, every three years, okay? So you need to contact your doctor. You need to stay proactive. You need to take care of your health because breast cancer is not something that is necessary for us to die from these days. There are too many resources and advancement. Once it is caught early, if you practice preventive medicine where breast cancer is concerned, you can live. You can do the same thing that I have done. I am a breast cancer survivor of five years, and it's possible. Cancer is now, breast cancer is now a chronic disease rather than something that you have to die for. So if you get proactive and start doing what you need to do, too many years people from the Caribbean have, have had a hush mouth about breast cancer or about cancer on the whole. Cancer is something usually that Caribbean people die of, not talk about. Well, we are going to bust the myths. We are going to dispel all of them. And what we are going to do is that we are going to get proactive and we are going to start doing what we need to do to keep cancer in check. You've got to stay, active. You've got to stay positive because cancer thrives on fear. When you go to the doctor, if he tells you that you have lumps in your breast, I know that you have to go get your biopsy. And once you go get your biopsy, if you find out that it is cancer, I know it is a difficult time. It is a very difficult time, but there are lots of things in place, lots of organizations in place that you can uh, uh, contact in order to help you to get the necessary assistance. There is no need for someone to die of cancer because they do not have the proper immigration papers. We have organizations out here that are willing to give you the help that you need. You need to contact us. You, know, uh, you can contact capcousa.org uh, to get the necessary referrals. You can contact, you can call 917-673-6350 or 718-940-8678. There is always someone at the other end to give you the information that you need. We also advocate if you have had cancer, and let's suppose you're doing chemotherapy, 
and you need some assistance, we are there to help you. So call us because we can, you know, we can, you can talk if you're scared, if you're worried, you know, we can talk to you. Losing a breast is traumatic. We all know this. But there is nothing to be ashamed of. There is nothing to be ashamed of. I repeated that for a purpose. There is nothing to be ashamed of. You are still very feminine. You are still very sexy. You can still be all woman with one breast or with no breast. You always have the choice to rebuild if necessary. But if you choose not to rebuild, there, is, there are prostheses that you can use, uh, specially built bras for you in order to help you look the best that you can be. There are, if you've lost your hair, there are organizations that will give you wigs and uh, help you with makeup and uh, provide you with the things that you need. But you must be proactive. You've got to watch your intake, the foods that you eat, the things that you drink, uh, the smoking. You know, you've got to curtail that, you know, or stop that altogether because it's no good. Get rid of the things that you know is going to harm you. Uh, it's, 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 it's a difficult time as it is. Family, I want to encourage family to be supportive to the family members or to your friends who have cancer who are suffering, who have breast cancer, or, or any other kind of cancer for that matter. You know, it's a, it's a very debilitating time. It's a time when you are so unsure of yourself. You are so unsure of your future and what's going to happen next. And what you need, you need positive people around you. I encourage all cancer survivors, uh, if you have people around you who are giving you horror stories about all of the people they know who died and all of the horrible things that are going to happen to you, you need to 86 them. You need to get them away from you. Stay far, clear, and stay clear of the talk, what I call toxic people and the people who have all the horror stories. You know, we all know how dangerous cancer is. We know that cancer is a potential killer. But if you do your preventive medicines, if you do what you're supposed to do, then, you know, and you stay positive, for all, you know, I want to encourage everyone to stay positive. I'm sitting here, testament to the fact that you can't survive cancer. Testament to the fact that even though the doctors say you'll never work again, you'll never do a whole lot of things that you can, you've got to change your mindset. You've got to stay proactive. Okay? So I want to remind you of that. And while you think about that, I want to take you to a break. So you stay tuned because I will be right back with more information for you. Welcome back. For those of you who are just joining us, you are watching BBC Health Alert on BBC Inner Side, and I am your special host, Pamela DeLeon Lewis. And I'm here today talking about breast cancer awareness staying strong and we have talked about early prevention being the best detect um, the, uh, being the early detection being the best prevention and now what I want to talk to you about continue as a matter of fact talking about is the positive mindset I encourage people to heal ju not just the body but heal mind body and spirit and we have talked about healing the body and we want to talk now about staying strong healing the mind and the spirit. And by doing so, you have to stay strong. You have to stay positive. I know it's not always going to be easy. There are days when you are doing chemo when it's going to feel like there is no tomorrow, but you've got to stay positive. You've got to know that you can come through this. You've got to let, you know, you've got to hold on to your self-esteem. You've got to hold on to your confidence. You've got to know that there is the light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train. You've got to know that you can come through this. I always say to people, you know, you've got to let cancer be the albatross, not be the albatross around your neck, but the winds beneath your wings. You've got to take something that's potentially dangerous and you've got to turn it into something positive. Use cancer to get to the next level. You know, there are things that you can do to stay positive. Do daily affirmations, you know, 
Tell yourself that you're getting better every day, every day regardless of how you feel. And I want to use myself because with me, when I was going through cancer, what I did every day was tell myself today is going to be a better day regardless of how I felt. And I know that there are days that you're going to feel like there is no tomorrow or the next minute is not going to come. But it will. You know, you just got to make sure that you stay strong, stay positive in mind, and reinforce that with the people that you allow to talk to you. You know, be careful of the things that you change your thought processes. You know, stop thinking about uh, and enjoy life. Grasp the moment and live it to the fullest and know that you can overcome this. You know, you can. Stay, just stay positive. It's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, and I'm going to tell you that because I've been there. I've been to the point where there were days when I couldn't even get up out of my bed. There were days when I couldn't even think straight, you know, but you have to stay positive. You have to know that you're just going through the storm and that after the storm is going to come a calm. See me? I, who would believe, who would have thought that after five years ago, today I would be here sitting so alive and so full of life, and that I am. I'm alive and full of life, and you can be too. You just have to stay positive. You just have to know that you can. No, you have to face cancer and show cancer who is boss. Do you understand me? You have to put cancer, take cancer to the bathroom, to your bedroom, someplace, and let cancer know when to get off. Let it know that you are in charge, not it. That you have the controls in your hand and you do what you have to do. Kick it to the curb. I can't enforce that enough. Kick it to the curb. You keep smiling. Listen to positive messages. You know, watch some comedy. Sing. Smile, smile, smile. Because what I have found in my research in the past five years is that the people who survive this thing are the people who stay positive who keep a positive mindset, the people who think, who know, and who believe that they are going to come out above on the other side, and they're going to be okay. Know that you can, okay? Know that you can. It is possible to do it. I had days when I, if, would you believe I couldn't walk at one point, that I had to be taught to walk again. I had a therapist come to my house and, sh you know, assist me in walking and here I am today I'm dancing I'm doing everything there were the days when I couldn't dance believe it or not I lay on my bed I played music and I was bopping like this to the you know moving my head whatever you can but you've got to stay positive you got to stay laughing because cancer thrives on fear you smile in the face of cancer write a book talk about your experiences it can probably help someone else okay stay positive Cancer hates a positive person. Put cancer where it's supposed to be. Don't you make cancer your God, because a lot of us do that. When cancer comes into our life, immediately we get crazy, and we say, oh, my God, we don't, I have cancer. It's going to kill me. It's going to do this. It's gonna. No, you make cancer know that you are in charge. This is your body, and you are not going to allow it to come into your life and destroy it. You understand? I've sat down, I've written poems. That's what I do. You know, you think you could walk into my life and destroy myself? Well, breast cancer, you don't know me very well. You know, because I'm not the kind of girl that you could victimize. But I must admit, for a while, you had me traumatized. So you do things like this. You know, I know why you wanted me breast cancer. I really do. My body looked good. And my breasts were tantalizing you. You know, I know you really love, but so you have to do things to keep you positive. You know, I remember writing up and kiss my butt cancer on the right side and on the left, kiss my butt cancer for invading my bright breast. You know, you thought you had me. You thought my back was against the wall. You thought you had your hooks on me. You thought you could make me fall. Well, I've got news for you, cancer, so you better listen well. God is my protector and you can go to hell. And that's what you got to do. You got to stand firm, stand tall, and tell cancer where to go. Let it know that you are in charge of your life and you're not going to make it your God. It is not your God. So stop adoring it. Stop worshiping it. Worship the God that you are custom worship, worshiping and put cancer, sell cancer to hell. Welcome back. You are watching BBC Health Alert on BBC Inner Side. And uh, before, the, before the break, I was talking to you about 
staying positive, releasing hurts, uh, make, you know, doing self-affirmations. And I would like to share with you in this segment the things that, some of the things that I have done that helped me to stay positive. And um, I'm going to read to you part of a reaffirmation that I wrote. Uh, and it's called a reaffirmation of my trust in God. Because remember I told you now that you have to keep cancer at bay by remind, letting it know that it is not your God. And you've got to keep your God where he's first. Keep him first. I promise to do everything in my power to resist demon, a.k.a. breast cancer, at all times. I will stay positive and optimistic regardless of how dismal or depressing it may get. I will give my situation to God from whom all strength comes. And this is something that I repeated to myself constantly. It is, you have to do things and you keep to remind yourself. I wrote down, you know, health, wealth, success across on my mirror on a banner and put it across from my, from my bed because I wanted to be reminded every morning when I awoke that I was going to be a better person that day. Some of the things that I did when I was having my, bi my, my biopsy, the, when I, 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 I was uh, scheduled to do the biopsy the night before my biopsy, I threw a pity party, okay? I had a little party, my crying party, it's time to cry or whatever, you know, uh, to, to, to get myself together. And I did a declaration, you know, declaring that cancer had to go, and I served it an eviction, a sem uh, uh, dispossess, which is a letter notifying it that it was going to be ejected from my body. That's once I had gotten the biopsy. When I was going to do my, to have the mastectomy, because I had a mastectomy of my right breast, and the night before the mastectomy of my right breast, I got me some uh, sparkling cider, I got out my best crystal glasses. I set them on inside my bathroom, on top of the sink. I poured me some. I stripped myself naked. I stood up and looked at myself in the mirror. I wrote a letter to uh, Gloria and Sylvia, which are my breasts, to bid them adieu, to bid, but actually to bid Sylvia adieu. And Gloria and I were going to be hanging out together after Sylvia was gone. So I did, I did that. And then I, when I had to have my mastectomy, I also threw a pity party. That's the night because I was going to lose my breasts. That was my night to cry and to get any kind of feelings that I had out into the open, all apprehensive feelings and everything else, to get myself together because the next day I was having surgery. I toasted my breast goodbye, I read the letter, and I uh, got myself together emotionally for the next morning. So I, I, I served my breast the eviction notice, which I had notarized. I had all of my work notarized. I had the letter that I wrote notarized, my affirmation notarized, my public announcement about cancer, being the demon that it is, I had all of it notarized, and I served it in effigy to my breast. And, and that, you know, uh, so this way, I kind of boosted my own spirit. I had to let, make myself feel like I'm in charge. That's what you have to do. You have to do whatever you have to do. Others may think that you're crazy or look at you like you're strange, but you know that there is a method to your madness. You have to do what you have to do to make you feel better. You are the one that's in this battle. You're in a fight for your life. And being in a fight for your life, this is a no holds bar. You understand? No holds bar. So you've got to do what you've got to do. And you've got to bring out the heavy duty metal um, armor. And, and, and that is doing all the things that you need to do to keep you strong, to, look, to make yourself know that it's going to be okay, that you're going to come out on the other side and you're going to be better, that you are going to you are going to be triumphant over this disease. You are going to put it in check by the things that you do. Keeping your mind straight, keeping your mind positive, keeping your mind strong, knowing that you are in charge, not cancer. Because if you turn over your willpower to cancer, it is going to wreak havoc on your body. It is most important that you do not let cancer get to your spirit because that's where it wants you to go. It wants you to get to the point where you feel hopeless where you, you know, you, you, you consider yourself as a lost cause. You are not a lost cause. Tell cancer it is a lost cause because you are on the ball and you are on the top of your game. And regardless of what you look in the mirror, when you look in the mirror and see yourself at your weakest points, you've got to stay, keep your mind in, at its strongest. 
you have to keep reinforcing that you're better. And that's why I tell people, you know, other people need to call you at that time and give you a positive word. You know, your family need to be there to positively reinforce what you are thinking. So you only keep the people around you who have the same mindset that you do. You don't want the people who are around you who are going to tell you that you're silly for thinking this way, that you're silly for doing the things that you're doing to stay strong. If these are people coming, because I've had people tell me I was crazy, you know, in, in the sense that cancer, you know, please, you know, that's not going to stop cancer from the, yes, the mind is a very strong thing and it's a terrible thing to waste. Use it positively. You know that you have within you the power to heal, the power to, 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 to get better. And you have within, within you the power to fight this thing. Okay, you came equipped. Don't give up hope on yourself. Don't put the hope that you should have in yourself into a disease that wants nothing better than to see you dead. That's what cancer wants to do. It wants you dead. So you have to stand up, stick your feet in the ground, and you grind your teeth together and you tell cancer, listen, you need to get the hell away from me. Do you understand me? This is my body, and I'm in charge of my body. You need to go to hell where you belong. I wrote poems. I did all of these things to keep me strong and positive. And um, one of the things I would like to do to you, and who would have thought that after going through cancer that I would have won Woman of the Year and gotten, you know, Best Poet of the Year for, for, for the poetry that I write, because I write cancer, I write poetry now for cancer survivors to reinforce, to help empower women to stay strong, to know that they can overcome this, okay? And I wrote one when I, after I got over, I'm going to read to you the, the, the poem that I won poem of the year with, and it's called I Fought the Fight. Welcome back to BBC Health Alert on BBC In Side. I want you to kick back and relax. Call your husband, because unfortunately men do get breast cancer too. Call your friends and gather around, because I am about to read to you the poem of the year for 2005 which is I Fought the Fight. And I want to read this to you. It's important because I've been talking about the things that you can do to stay positive and the things to empower yourself. And this is a sample of what I did to empower myself. So many days have passed, my friends. I didn't realize just when, but I've made it here somehow. The worst it seems is over now. My right breast is now history. I'm through with chemotherapy. I'm through with radiology, and I look forward to what life holds for me. I'm feeling better each and every day. I'm now moving in a positive way. You see, my patients and my health were wearing thin, and I wrestled hard with breast cancer to win. Now I no longer feel despair, but I still feel the wear and tear. I still feel the pains from chemotherapy, and I have severe burns from radiology but somehow it really strengthened me. It toughened my spirituality. My health and my life now has a new directive and a totally different perspective. I see things in a different light. I fought with cancer, yes. I fought the fight. Now I live and I savor every day because I don't intend to let life slip away. There is no more worrying about the little things. I look forward to what each moment brings. You see, I am ecstatic that I am still here. And death is something that I no longer fear. I've come to terms with my mortality because I had to face hard facts about reality. You see, my friends, I came to realize that I walk with death each moment that I am alive. So I pause, take a breath, open my eyes, and I thank the Lord that I can still see the skies. And that was I Fought the Fight, which came from my award-winning book, Smiling Through the Tears. And I want to leave you all with a, lot of, with a positive message. I want you to remind your, your partners, your husbands, your brothers, that men do get breast cancer too. Unfortunately, 1% of men are affected. And so we have to, when we are doing our self-exams, we have to remind the men in our lives to also examine their chest, their breasts, and make sure that if they find any lumps, 
that they should also report it because it can be a detrimental thing. You see, those of you living with, 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 with cancer have to realize that there are lots, and the, the, the people who have people in their lives who have breast cancer, you have to realize that after having chemo and radiation, that there are such a thing as side effects. A lot of people are suffering side effects. You may have neuropathy, you know, uh, that's one of it. You may have vertigo, you may develop heart problems, you may develop a whole lot of other issues, but you have to stay strong. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't be a better person. It's a new normal. It is not going to be the same. It's not life as usual. No matter what they say, you are a survivor, but you are a survivor who is living with pain. Maybe you are living with other side effects. But you have to stay strong and realize and take your go get your, 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 your checkups as your doctor recommends. They'll tell you when you're supposed to come back. You go, you keep your, your, your um, appointments. You take care of what you have to take care of. Make sure that you also take care of your diet because after having dealt with cancer, you cannot continue to eat all of the fast foods or continue to eat the things that you did before because you may have developed also maybe diabetes, maybe you have developed high blood pressure, or maybe you developed nothing. But even if you've developed nothing after cancer, I think that it's, it's only right to let you know that you should watch your diet. Stay active because breast cancer uh, or cancer on the whole is, is once it's hanging over your head, you need to know that you have to be proactive. You have to stay on top of your game. And one of the ways you have to do is to stay active. You stay active. You, get, you, you, you walk on your treadmill, take a walk around the park when the afternoon, keep moving. These are, this is one of the deterrents of cancer. Be aware of the foods that you eat. Get yourself the, you know, uh, research the internet and see which foods are cancer fighters and use those foods. Eat a lot of greens, it's very good. Antioxidants, drink a lot of grape juice because you know you can stay young, you can stay strong, you can stay healthy, you can stay looking good. You don't have to look haggard, you don't have to look ridiculous. I am a cancer survivor and if I should say so myself, I look good. I would like to thank all viewers for watching BBC Health Alert, where the vision gets clearer every time. Before I go, I'd like to leave you with this message. Surround yourself with a few good people Share love, respect, and knowledge. It will make a difference. My name is Pamela DeLeon Lewis. I want to remind you to call me at 917-673-6350 or 718-940-8678. See you next time.